view, which is love to disrupt industries, customer, and then showing people who don't believe. Yeah. Is that it? Oh. I mean, for me, there's one thing which is just simply applications of technology. Yeah. You know, what I love is thinking about how you can apply technology to solve a new problem and how you can close your eyes and see where it's going. Yeah. You know, and then see, and if you, if you think about that, it's pretty obvious where an industry is going to be in three or five years, and most people are not programmed to do that in their job. Yeah. They're programmed to look for the next six months. Yeah. So it's quite exciting when you can do that and say, right, my time scale is three to five years. It's not the hedge fund time scale of a day trader, yeah. you know, which is what CEOs are often buffeted into these days. Yeah. Um, so I think that's kind of fun. No, no, I agree. And then uh, I have a question for you is around, if you look back at your career, um, it's as if you're like 60 now, isn't it? But maybe not. Um, <laughs> no. but, but, but has there been a, a single magic moment or a couple of magic moments, you know, that really um, stand? Yeah, no, that's a good question. I mean, clearly, you know, I think a couple of things. First, actually going into strategy consultancy was a, a yeah. great, and going to, to Spectrum Strategy where I worked, which was media and telecom. So getting yeah. immersed in that, having my love of the internet reinforced there so I could see it again, because I guess consultants, you're looking at the future for yeah. people. So that was very easy. I mean, it didn't take a rocket science to be in that industry and say, hey, this internet thing is going to happen. Yeah. Um, so that was one, I think, key key thing. And then I think it was probably the break from when I fell out with the founder of QXL, where I was working quickly with the online auction company, yeah. mm -hmm. falling out with him and then thinking, right, seeing having worked there four months, seeing the growth of the internet, not being able to do a deal with him for me to stay, because um, I was offered too little, and then saying, actually, now is my moment. And the timing happened to be very lucky. It was 98 at the beginning of the internet, and it was perfect timing to, to get lastminute.com started. And mm -hmm. um, the question for you is, if you're now advising corporate CEOs, what are the three things that you'd advise them on? I think one thing is innovation and technology. Both of them seem to have a low priority in many organizations. I think, again, they talk innovation, but how many yeah. actually have it on their agenda? So at last point, we tried to put at the end when we were less innovative as we got bigger, yeah. to put it on the monthly management board meeting agenda. And say, what have we done that's actually innovative, that's yeah. real, that's really going to have the chance to, to, to change our business? And I think putting it on the agenda at least gives it the visibility. And if you haven't done something, at least you then ha have, have, have to admit it. Um, Otherwise, I think it is, uh, I think you've alluded to it, but it's probably youthful talent. And I think it's, to me, it was always the question of if you had, I looked at last minute at the end and said, right, if I was that bright 25-year-old in yeah. the company today, would I stay? Right. And I think it's making sure they stay. And what yeah. makes them stay? Having good ideas and seeing them implemented. Yeah. If they have good ideas and don't see them implemented, then they go. So it was giving them a forum and a way of seeing those ideas percolate right through um, to top management and seeing that that is important and it's not just cultural speak. I do you think there's also get, tapping into those sort of 25 year olds is another area of opportunity for big corporates you know to do yeah. it not not with a mindset of it's a graduate scheme but to put yeah. them right in in a, in a big yeah. role. And I think that was something else that happened in my career you're right is that when I worked at Spectrum what I did notice it was a very small company yeah. I had a disproportionate amount of responsibility so yeah. I think it's hiring those people who can cope with disproportionate amounts of responsibility at a young age. And so what tends to happen, I think I alluded to before, but in these corporate boardrooms is that most people are guided by their kids or yeah. their grandkids. Yeah. You know, yeah. grand so they're guided by that in terms of what they think of the new of the future. Whereas actually, why not be guided by people within your company yeah. um, who are 20, 25, who can see that and give them a real voice. Yeah, definitely. Okay, and then and finally, you know, the Brett Hoberman secrets of being a great CEO. Is there is there one secret or a couple? Is there one secret? I think the most always is just being passionate about what you're doing. Um, and I think if you're passionate about what you're doing, that shines through. Um, and then I think the, the the other obvious thing is treating people as you'd like to be treated yourself. So, yeah. and leading by example. So if you're expecting people to do stuff, then just do it yourself as yeah. well. Just do it. Yeah. All right, Brent. Well, thanks very much for your time. Great. I know it's very busy at this this stage yeah. of a, a startup business, and uh, thank you. Great. Thanks, Dean. Okay.